Good morning, everyone. I was about to be really, really loud then, and I realized that people are still in bed. I think Ali might be stirring. When I say people, it's just me and Ali, Porter and Lumi in the house. Um, and I think maybe he's up to go to the gym. But I'm up quite early today because I have such an exciting day planned. This has been in the like schedule slash diary for months. And twice we've had to reschedule this basically because a few months ago, basically, just to go back, one of my favorite people to follow on Instagram is Zanna. And if you don't know Zanna, I'm sure you do, but I always say that about everyone, but <laughs> I always feel like everyone knows about everyone that's like cool before I do. I'll link her in the description box down below. She's got a vlogging channel and she's also um, on Instagram as well. But I've followed Zanna for ages and she's one of those people that I follow because I relate to her so much, even though we're so different to like certain extents. I relate to her and I find the way that she communicates things really nice. So she's always like the one person that I look for her stories and I look for her uh, YouTube videos and stuff like that. And um, the reason why I love her so much as a creator is because the way that she touches on things like sustainability, first of all, they don't make me feel guilty for the way that I do things or the little things that I do where there's maybe some bigger things that I don't do. Uh, she doesn't make me feel guilty for that and she suggests really like fair and good alternatives to things. I also think she looks like a blooming supermodel so in terms of like fitness I really like watching her stuff and just generally I just find her really lovely and so I've followed her for ages. We've met like a handful of times and I've just realized that we've got more and more in common like she goes on hikes and admittedly the hikes that she goes on are probably proper hikes and not hikes with a hint of pub crawl like I go on, but still she's inspired me to want to go to like Switzerland and hike and things like that. Or was it Sweden? One of the two. And um, a few months ago, I saw that she did a foraging course and I have lots of foraging books around my house. It's something, a topic that really, really fascinates me. And I was like, shut the front door. I would love to do this. And that was it, we kind of booked it. The only problem was that when it ended up falling, like the date that we'd, we'd set on, it was the worst weather we could have ever possibly like had for it. And we, I'm so glad we canceled. I felt really bad because you never want to be the person that's like, I think this is a bad idea. But it was, we made such a good call because it was like torrential. There was like winds, it was really bad. So then we rescheduled it and I went to Soho Farmhouse a few months ago. And on the way back from Soho Farmhouse, I got a flat tire wouldn't be a problem because we have two cars, except Ali had golf the next day, which was the day that I was supposed to drive down to Zana, so I couldn't go. I felt really bad about that as well, because I didn't want anyone thinking that like I was like canceling because I didn't want to do it. Anyway, third time lucky, we are here on the day, and I am getting ready to head down there now. I've been up quite early because I want to get there to hers early, just so that I can meet like Bella for example, and also just go down, have a coffee, and then we're gonna head and do a bit of a forage. So we're doing it with Foraged by Fern, and she is just basically, everything you imagine a real life woodland fairy to look like, that's Fern. And she's so sweet, I follow her off the back of Zana doing the course. She seems so lovely, so um, I'm really, really looking forward to doing this. But I thought that I would get myself ready. As you can see, that my tan is slowly fading, and so I'm just gonna do, obviously we're gonna be outside all day, so it's just gonna be the most simple of simple makeup looks for me, because what's the point? I'm literally wearing like shorts and a vest top because it's supposed to be really nice today. It's not that sunny at the moment, but it is supposed to be a very, very lovely day. So I've just slathered my, my body in a very summery fragrance. This is the Declior Neroli Brigade Comforting Body Milk. And this is one of the products that made me fall in love with Declior as a brand. It is the most beautiful, beautiful brand. I think there are so many brands now in terms of beauty and it's really hard to find one that really, like you've got to have a USP, haven't you? And the essential oils and the beautiful fragrances of Declior for me are their kind of USP because they encapsulate floral fragrances, aromatherapy oils and essential oils like no other brand. And I just, 
this smells like summer it's got that hint of like a sun creamy sun creamy fragrance to it but floral but not overpowering and i just love waking up on a summer's morning when it's sunny a little bit nicer than today but this brings the sunshine for me and i just cover my body in it because it is the nicest fragrance and everyone always says what body cream is that so i know that there's lots of people that like to sort of layer body creams and fragrances this is a brilliant one for that so this was the the product that kind of really got me into decleal now i'm a bit of a decleal fan i have to say so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a little bit of a glow routine just for a quick makeup-y look so i'm going to show you how i'm trying to keep my skin as glowy as possible even though the sun in England is not helping me out because I would really like to continue this golden glow that I have from being in the sunshine. I miss holiday already. <laughs> I've brought this particular product up from my bathroom. This is the Declior, I always go to say Amorescence, but it's Aromescence. It's all 100% natural, which for me, it's really lovely to know that the thing that I'm putting on my skin first in the morning is 100% natural. And you'll know if you've been around here for a while that I love, I love oils. But this one, I apply three drops of, by the way, is all centered around keeping your skin glowing. And so if ever, if ever there was an oil for me, oh my gosh, the fragrance. If ever there was an oil for me, this is the one. This is my little bit of indulgence in the morning, but I've seen such a difference in my skin since I've started spending a little bit more time. I was kind of one of those people that would like just throw all of the products at my face and just hope for the best. But slowing things down a little bit, which I found to be quite beneficial in every walk of life, just slowing everything down a little bit is always a good thing. Basically, you apply the three drops to your hands, you warm it up in your hands, and then if you really want to be like an at-home facialist which sometimes I like to pretend I am I will just breathe in the essential oils and it is just to take a moment just a moment in the morning so so lovely and then basically I just spend a little bit more time massaging my skin especially on days when I feel like I don't know if it's just me that gets this, but I wake up some mornings and I'm like, mm, my face just doesn't feel awake. Spending the time actually massaging product into my skin rather than just kind of throwing it at it and hoping for the best has been a huge, huge game changer for my skin in the mornings. Getting the blood flowing to it, getting the product into the skin has just been an absolute joy. There's actually a video, if you are thinking about trying it, which over on my Instagram stories, I'm going to have some samples that you can get for free. Like, you don't have to do anything, just get them for free. If you want to try it, there's a video on the Declior website. Sweet? Website? On the Declior website that basically shows you exactly how to apply and in the best way to get the kind of like glowing results and get the product into your skin to leave it feeling really energized and just awake. And for me, I could do this all day. I could literally do this all day. But instantly, my skin feels so much better. And I've definitely found that using oils in the morning works really well for keeping my skin hydrated in the way that I like it to be hydrated. So this is really good, especially when you've been on holiday. I could not believe how dry my skin was when I got back from Ibiza. Oh my goodness, like I did not drink enough water. I need to remember that rosé is not water, okay? And next up, we have the product which is really helping with keeping A, my face matching the rest of my body because we all know that tans fade um, the quickest on your face, which is so annoying because especially as we have like colder days in the UK, if I've got a jumper on, Nobody knows how gorgeous and glowing and tanned I am. This is the Sun Kiss Cream from Declior. And don't let the color like alarm you in any way. This is all natural as well. And these two products together is basically my little secret weapon. So I add a little dot to every sort of zone of my face, a little bit on the nose. Sometimes it's best with this to do like a double application for me because you get a slightly more intense color but you can see instantly how natural so if you're someone that doesn't like makeup 
or really just wants to achieve a natural look but but you're not wanting to use maybe fake tan or foundation or anything like that where you don't like shimmer this is the product for you because it instantly gives you that look as if the sun has kind of touched the highest points of your face and given it a really beautiful glow and again i just massage this in everything comes down to application i find at the moment and spending the time applying is it's just also very nice and self-indulgent isn't it <laughs> i also take it up my neck of course just to keep everything married up i think because today i am going to be doing a slight barely there makeup look i'm going to go for one application which instantly makes me look a little bit more revived let that soak in i'll usually enjoy a bit of a coffee whilst I let my skincare soak in. I'll start a podcast or an audio book and just get not just my skin in the right frame of mind for the day, but also my mind. It's so important for me personally. And it's those little things, like I know you might think to yourself, like why am I spending the time doing this? The biggest thing that I've realized with taking care of yourself, it's not the big things that you do that um, make a difference. It's those small things that you do, whether it's writing one thing down in your journal that makes you feel amazing, applying your skincare just a little bit more indulgently and taking a little bit extra care of yourself. It's those things that add up. They're little tiny little things that drip feed so much more loveliness into your life and they always help me feel so much better it's like when someone says just putting on some makeup or doing my fake tan instantly lifts my mood all of the other things will also play into that as well just a little nugget of information there i always like to feel like you leave my video with some kind of nugget of information and i would love to know in the comments down below if there's ever anything that you've taken from my videos that has kind of stuck with you and what that was whether it's a product a tip a life thing i'd love to know in the comments down below this is like just something i'm interested in <laughs> okay now it's time for a little bit of face spritzing so first up we're going to use the very end of this saint tropez purity self tan mist again just these are all of the products that i basically turn to to keep my skin glowing. Spritz that onto my face, like so. Let it do its thing as well. It's all about giving your skin the time to absorb and kind of process the products. So we'll give that a little uh, spritz and a set and then have a bit of coffee and then the next product. <laughs> then of course, I'm gonna be outside. So I am going to apply my Kate Somerville Factor 50 Uncomplicated SPF. This is a new bottle because I've already finished my other one. I absolutely rinsed it on holiday. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now double speed, get some light on my face. Double speed, we are going to do my face for the day. So as always, eh, don't wanna ruin what I've just put on my face. Definitely got to get my eyes a little bit brighter when you've got up as early as I have today. We need a little bit more brightness in my eyes as well, not just that. And then I'm gonna go in with a bit of makeup. So this is the By Terry Brightening CC Serum and this will just blur out my pores. So I've got my base on and everything is working towards making sure my skin looks glowing and fresh and actually the green mandarin in the uh, Sunkiss cream will actually help renew the surface of my skin as well. So it's not just a tinted product, it is something that is working with the skin to keep it glowing, not just on a colour level, like on the tone and the, the sun kissedness of it, but also on the condition of your skin so that it's looking rejuvenated and bright because my skin gets dull so, so easily. So I really like products that help renew the skin surface in that kind of way as well. So I'm gonna go in quickly with my peach and banana low lighter and I just dab these in areas that I need it. Mr. Millen Gordon is as usual throwing the plates into the dishwasher. <laughs> I wonder what he does, genuinely. But I'm very grateful that he does it anyway. And that's basically what I do. Uh, banana under the eyes, peach, anywhere I want a little bit of concealing, basically. Mm. 
Now, I've just bronzed things up using the Solotan de Chanel. I'm not actually using it as a bronzer. I'll use a bronzer on top of this. This is more to uh, marry up my skin with the rest of my body as well, whilst also wearing makeup. This works really well as a foundation and a bronzer, which is really nice. So I've been using that like that. And then for bronzer, I am using the By Terry Hydra Palette in medium to warm. And I'm using this darker shade down here, but it's wonderful because it's got so many different shades as well in the palette. So I just add this to bring definition as well to the areas and I just dust it on like this. And then I don't do anything to my brows other than brush them. This is one thing I'm finding with my stepmom when she does my brows. I don't know how she does it, but I don't need to add so much pencil. So I feel fine not putting any brow stuff on basically. Then for eyeliner, just to make me look a little bit more awake, I'm going to use the Tom Ford eyeliner in chocolate. I just smudge this across the lash line a little bit. I realized then I was scratching my eyelid with it. <laughs> so silly. Eyeliner done, lip liner on. Little bit of By Terry Hydra Balm and a little bit of Guerlain Mascara. I need to do a MAC order as well. That is one thing I really need to do is a MAC order of the Hush blush thingy that I use as a highlight. Their eyeliner in Teddy and I used their mascara the other day. Well, I didn't use it. Basically, my makeup artist used it and it was phenomenal, so I need to order that. That is on my list of things to do when I get back from Xana's. But that is basically what I've been doing. In fact, no, it's not, because I also need. The reason why I was telling you about MAC is a little bit of MAC Fix Plus. Let that set as well. We love a face mist in this house. Anything that's misty, I'll spray it on my face, basically. Um, but I will link all of my favorite Declio products in the description box down below. I will link the oil serum and also the sun kiss cream, also my body cream, lots of other bits and bobs that I love. Um, but these two together are making such a difference just to the way that my skin looks throughout the day. I don't feel like I get to the end of the day and my skin feels dry, cakey, tight. Sometimes I could literally like rub my skin and it would have got so dry and like, not congealed, because that's a really gross word. So we're not gonna use that word, but basically that. When you like rub it, it would like pill and come off. Now my skin feels hydrated at the end of the day. It's perfect. So I will link those in the description box down below if you want to try them. I will also link you to where you can get the free sample as well if you wanted to try it out. Before buying, I always think that this is a really good thing that brands do because um, they're so confident that you're gonna love their products. They're giving you the opportunity to try them for yourself, which I think is such an important thing in this day and age especially as well that due to COVID and things like that, we can't use testers in the same way that we used to. So hopefully it's a good way for you to discover the brand as well. But I'm gonna get the rest of myself ready and uh, head down to Surrey. Okay, I'm in the car. I'm a little bit later than I'm supposed to be. I just said goodbye to Ali and he said to me, where are you going today? Are you going truffle sniffing? <laughs> it makes me laugh so much. I've packed up some brownies made with the courgettes from my garden for uh, Zana and um, her partner. I've got a chocolate milk. I've got some shorts to change, in, change into. I've got a hoodie, I've got water. I've got sunglasses. I also have a Stephen Bartlett postcode, to, postcode, Stephen Bartlett Ujimi Flip. What's the Ujimi Flip that I'm trying to tell you about? A Stephen Bartlett podcast that Carrie has told me to listen to. And funnily enough, it is Zana that got me into Stephen Bartlett's podcast in the first place. Literally obsessed with him. And he's such a good podcaster and he has such great guests. But I think this one is just like him. I am good to go. A little bit later than planned. So hopefully I don't get stuck in traffic. <laughs> but I'm excited, woo woo. Right, I've even brought my own boot pull because I've got my Dewberry boots on and um, I don't want, I don't have Ali to help me <laughs> take my boots off. Yeah, so I thought I'd bring my own little oak boot pull with me so that I can get my boots on and off with ease. Right, podcast on 
I shall see you on the flip side, potentially, unless I feel like I need to verbally chew your ear off on the way down. One hour, 38 minutes. Let's go. Hello. I've arrived in the leafy suburbs where Zana lives and I'm in the Tesla. Welcome Hiya. to the vlog. Welcome to Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> this is the snazziest thing I think I've ever seen. Yeah, this is so snazzy. Look at this. <gasps> I love it. Screen. And this. Is, is this got a sunroof or is it just you know like what? a... You I don't think it does. I, think. I didn't choose a sunroof in my car because I, mm. I think that they look really nice when they're just glass like this. <gasps> wow, it goes all the way to the back. Oh my God, car tour. Um, <laughs> I hope you've done a car tour of this. Have you done I a have car? not. It's on my it's on my content list. Yeah, yeah, you need to do a car I tour. Do that. Otherwise I'm gonna do it for you. <laughs> um we've just arrived to the woods and we've both realised that we drank a very large glass of coffee before oh we left. Gosh. So it's gonna be nature wheeze all around. But we're gonna go and find Fern now. Fern is doing our foraging course. Foraging course or truffle snuffling, is Ali who's called truffle it. Snuffling. Truffle snuffling. I love that word. <laughs> Let's do truffle snuffling. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm making a point. Of vlogging because I get so caught up in conversation. Literally, we have not shut up since I've got here. We have not. Uh, mostly me being like, meh, 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 meh. I knew that I was like, I got to Zana's house. I've had a brief look around, but I'm, I'm obviously going to be giving you a, a little. Well, I mean, you've seen it on her channel. If you haven't, I'll link it down below. But I'll give you a little bit of a, a look Shapey. from my perspective and yeah. show you all the things that I love. And maybe we can get Bella in the vlog. Yes, yeah, hopefully she's warmed to me a little bit by then. Yeah, Bella's a little bit of a standoffish girl, but. <laughs> She'll be warm to you. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true. Right, so we're going to head there now because I don't want to be late. I can't believe I actually managed to make it here after all of the times that it was like thwarted by the weather and my Tires. cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we're going to go now and I'm so excited. So we've just had our safety brief. Ooh. What's that? No, 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 and we are foraging with Fern. I'll link her Instagram account down below, but basically I saw Zana do a foraging course with her and I got so excited and I messaged Zana and I was like, I want to go on this course with you. And we've been trying to get it in for ages and we finally managed it. Fern was very, very flexible, um, flexible with me. <laughs> and um, we've just done our sort of safety and sustainability uh, briefing before we go out so that we can be extra careful and we are now ha heading out into the wildlife to do some foraging. Our, our eyes are on the ground. I don't know what I'm looking for just yet. <laughs> Is this sorrel? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we did this one in the last one. But I, I, I haven't seen it this big because when I saw it with you last time, the sorrel leaves were like this big. Oh, really? So, so this is sorrel. This is yeah. sorrel. I think I've seen you talk about this on your Instagram. Oh, yeah, probably. It's, a really, it's got a really long season. So it pops up in spring and then dies back in summer and comes back in autumn. Nice. So almost like all through the year, you can find yourself some sorrel. Mm. But if you try one of the leaves and see what you think. Oh, really? So, because that, that was one of the things I was going to ask. I was like, mm. obviously, this is quite low on the ground, isn't it? Yeah. And so you just kind of... Eat it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that nobody's had a nature wee near it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, always lowering the tone. It tastes like dog piss. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the flavour of all things here. No, so it's People, good. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's got such flavour. Yeah, yeah. I was not expecting so that. What, what kind of flavour are you getting? It, am I allowed to say it's citrusy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. So the kids in my forest school call this lemon leaf. Okay. Um, and it's literally what people on the British Isles would have used to liven up a dish before we started really importing nice. citrus fruits. Mm. So anything that you now think like, oh, that needs a squeeze of lemon, at some point in history, people on the British Isles would have thought, oh, that needs a sorrel sauce. Wow. Mm. I really <laughs> like that. Yeah. That's, yeah, I was it? not expecting <laughs> that at all. That's brilliant. About nettles. Because I know you can people um, do things with nettle seeds. This is our little foraging yeah. basket. Team basket. Let me talk about nettles. <laughs> I'm much more okay with nettles. Okay, great. Because <laughs> didn't you make nettle pakora? Mm, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I was like, I'm not confident with anything that could <laughs> hurt my skin that to yeah. make anything yet. With nettles, it's just about how to cook them. Because yeah. I think so many people, when they start with nettles, they like nuke them and they cook them for like 20 minutes. Like that would hard be me. Boil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it always starts there and then you can like reduce it down. Mm. <laughs> so they're called um, Himalayan balsam. Oh wow. wow. They're also known as um, jumping jacks and I've heard them called lovers by the hill as well. Mm -hmm. So lots of our plants have lots of Aww. like cute little, yeah, yeah. cute little common names. 
Um, essentially, they are a non-native invasive. So oh. they were actually brought over from India as kind of like a garden plant. Mm. But they spread like crazy because... So when these are ripe and they're not quite ready yet, if you literally pinch them, they'll explode out and all the little wow. seeds are king all over the place. Wow. But the seeds are kind of what we're after as foragers. Okay. Oh. Um, so the seeds are really lovely and kind of crunchy and nutty. Yeah, give him a squeeze and see if he pops. Oh, no, nearly. Not, 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 not. <laughs> what do they taste like, Zana? Very mild cashew. Ooh. Not, I mean, I'd say that. Would you agree? Oh, I love cashews. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love I'm gonna that. try it's one of myself. Like such orchids. I'm like, yeah. wow, you are just so delicate. You can. It's really sweet as well. So sometimes when it rains, the bees will go inside to like hide. No, I actually saw a little bee <laughs> pop out of one when we were just talking. Yeah. Then it just went. <laughs> they are I'm trying to think because I'm not getting cashew. There is something. Mm. It's almost like lentil. No. Mm. There's something <laughs> that I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm trying so hard. I've definitely had this taste before, mm. but I can't pinpoint what it is. And it's something... Very mild though. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Wow. You'll see they the smell. plant in yeah. different stages. Because mm. I feel like that could quite easily throw you off or you think that was a different plant. Yeah, yeah well, I did think that it? was a different plant. Okay. Same, same. So can you see that like the the actual um flowering stems they yeah. have these little <gasps> tight like little Mini baby yarrows yeah. on them baby yarrow. so this is just <laughs> <laughs> so when you're picking yarrow as like a vegetable as a mm. salad vegetable you want to be picking these really bright green fresh yarrow leaves because yeah. the ones on the flowering stem are just a little bit tough yeah. they don't have okay. the same texture yeah um but the flowers are really great they can be used for tea they can be used for like infusions or if you're making like a wild like nettle beer or something mm. like that yarrow flowers have lots of natural wild yeast that sit on the top so you yeah. can brew with them so with the tea yes. you'd use the flowers and the leaves yeah would you crush them up or no, so you just pop them in let it do it its exactly. thing right okay this one is is ground ivy mm -hmm. so what we're looking for here are these like kidney bean shaped or hoof shaped green leaves mm -hmm. um and if you give them a crush and smell them you should get like a really, really strong herbal flavour. Oh wow, that is stronger it's, it's than I like strong last time. Yeah. yeah. So as the I'm like it, treading on it all. Oh, <laughs> one like this. So yeah, one like that one or these. Okay. All oh my god! You know when there's so many, you're like, which one do I pick? <laughs> yeah. Which one do I pick? When you're trying to get the smell out of leaves, you're you're wanting to release all the juices and all the oils, so you want to like really smush it. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> it smells so strong. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of smells are you getting? Sage. Yeah. yeah, it's quite like an earthy. Mm -hmm. Oh, sage. that now I've got it. Sage or weed comes up a lot as well. Oh yeah, like weed. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm not getting weed. Definitely yeah. like a sagey or a more more yeah. rosemary. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, really nice. So, mm. um, so let's get Zana her <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> Zana spotted this mushroom whilst Fern was talking and Fern was like, I've already seen it, I wasn't uh, going to tell yeah. you. Yeah, because <laughs> Zana's very excited. She's here for the mushrooms. Okay. So. I've got a up my arse, girls. I've got a thorn up my arse. <laughs> Wait, I'll go out this way. Have you guys foraged any mushrooms before? Never. I Never. have, obviously, as a child, yeah. but I wouldn't be able to remember anything from that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I'm happy to... So my brother would know everything about this <laughs> was he? yeah i love that so essentially with mushrooms um there are over twelve thousand species of mushrooms that grow in the uk so there's there's a hell of a lot i tend to focus on the edible mushrooms and obviously the really poisonous mushrooms as well which really brings it down from from twelve thousand. Yeah. okay species, which is great so you've almost got your your edibles you're deadly poisonous and then you've got a good like range in the middle of just kind of like they're mushrooms they're they're the neither there. here yeah there. yeah <laughs> yeah the mushroom in general is the fruiting body of a larger organism called mycelium oh yeah um, i've read the book fungi what's the word what's the name is of it about a fungi <laughs> <It's too laughs> sorry sorry i'll stop i'll stop <laughs> We're trying to identify a mushroom. Oh, I've done very well. <laughs> if we're trying, oh, it's really, it's really in there.
Um, oh, bless. Oh, but the reason I'm doing that is, okay, nice. is right at the bottom of the mushroom, there's going to be more identifying features that right. you need to have a look at. You have to look at that before you... Yeah, so there's kind of like an old theory that you should always cut a mushroom to leave this intact so we don't disrupt the mycelial network, mm -hmm. but that's been falsified. So it, popping it up, helps you to identify the mushroom and it's been shown it does not harm the mycelial network wow. so especially when you're beginning and especially when you're trying to identify a mushroom you want to be popping it up in case you're missing like something you know yeah is it in is it growing from an egg or is it just like a smooth mm. stem all the way down mushrooms are like you have to be very, obviously very very careful with mushrooms yeah not only because there are poisonous mushrooms that can kill you if they're eaten but also because there is so much variation within mushrooms mm. so this mushroom will look completely different you know a, a couple of weeks on when right. it's getting really old it will be slimy it might change color mm. so you need to be able to spot a mushroom and know when it's in like its prime mm -hmm. so this mushroom's in its prime it's nice and firm it's it's really colorful it's, it's holding its shape but also you need to kind of remember that there's a lot of variation between uh specimens as well right yeah. so Generally, I, I feel like if they're red, you don't yeah. you don't want to eat them. So in general, we've got like a lot of wives' tales around mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, if the slugs eat them, I can eat them. Or uh, if they're red, I'll be dead. Yeah. None of them are true. Oh, okay. <laughs> my whole Wait, life is a lie. So yeah. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> dog leaves yeah. don't do what they're supposed to <laughs> and red mushrooms are absolutely fine. No. Let's see, so we're gonna pop it up from the ground again. Not he's cover ourselves. Oh up. my gosh, he's like a he's beautiful. He's literally isn't like he? an emoji mushroom. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, so this mushroom is a member of the Russula family. Uh -huh. The Russulas are also known as brittle gills, which gives us a clue. Mm. So if you have a look at the gills, if you run your finger over them. Can I touch it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you oh, see oh, they're well, really yeah. brittle? And they look they like flaked almonds. Yeah, yeah, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So the stem is always pure white mm. and simple. So it doesn't yeah. have a skirt and it doesn't grow from an egg. Yeah. It just looks like a little piece of, of used chalk. Yeah. And then it's got those bright white brittle gills. And the russulas all have like a completely different colour okay. top. I don't think this is a sickener just because it's got much more purple yeah. tones. Now that yeah. You, I thought that that was the, the mud. But now that you can see the top of it, you can yeah. see that it's, it it's isn't. It's purple. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So mushrooms are generally not something you want to do like a taste test with. No. <laughs> but with the russulas, if you're sure you've got a member of the russula family, yeah. you can or we have the ability to taste the toxin. Oh. So the toxin tastes like a really hot peppery chilli. Okay. So if you found a russula, what you can do is break off a bit of the, the cap and give it a nibble and if it's got like a mild flavor just tastes really mild and, and maybe creamy it's a delicious edible russula yeah but mm. if you're getting any like spiciness you just spit it out and you know that's not one for the dinner right. table but i think it makes russulas like a really fun family yeah because when yeah, you yeah. find them you can be like Ooh, taste yeah. <laughs> is it gonna kill me <laughs> <laughs> okay we are about to do a taste test of the mushrooms. If it's spicy, spicy yeah, spit it out, honey. Spit it actually. out. So these are for the Russula, Russula, Russula family. family. Also known as the brittle girl. No, it's mild. It's mild. Yeah? Mm. Ten oh, seconds. Oh, no. Ten seconds. No. Mm. Yeah. There <laughs> That's why you chew for ten, ten seconds. seconds. <laughs> oh, it's spicy. Mm. I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so usually with your nettles, you're going to want to wear gloves. Yeah. But the sting goes right through gardening gloves. So the oh. best thing to use are like marigolds. Okay. And you will look insane. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you will. Know yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, are you going to pick these without gloves? Well, yeah, just to show you how to do it if I did have But you're going to get stung. No, so, so all the stinging hairs they all point away from the central stem right so if you pull and you flatten the hair underneath your finger you're not going to get stung you put it in your basket but not in that bit and then you just <laughs> yeah you just never touch it ever yeah. again <laughs> Oh, 
we have finished up foraging mm -hmm. in the woods and now we are having the most incredible oh my gosh what's that <laughs> elderflower and mugwort beer <gasps> stop <What>? it <laughs> This is just too much. The, the salad looks incredible. This is just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And mugwort champagne or, oh, or beer. Oh, oh, we're just going. You go first. Just you go first. You. Oh, okay. You don't want. Yeah, they're very powerful. You only want a little bit. Oh, wow. One. She's strong. <laughs> but amazing. Oh, wow. Mm. That is unreal. Mm. Mm. They're great, aren't they? That is delicious. <laughs> We've got a fresh made, homemade tagliatelle with um, a wild pesto with mm -hmm. nasturtium, ground ivy and yarrow. And then on top you've got your little wild garlic capers. And then we've got a freshly foraged salad with yarrow, sorrel, I think there's a bit of ground ivy in there, nasturtium and some cat's eye flowers. And then for dessert you've got these wild damson and wild blackberry, they're called galettes, so mm -hmm. they're like just little pies. The fruit has been flavoured with a wild spice mix, so it's been flavoured with hogweed seed, oh, magnolia yeah. petal and alexander seed. And then there's just a little like coconut and elderflower cream as well. Wow. So I'll give you guys some cutlery. Oh my goodness. Right, we are back home now and I am sat on Zana's lovely furniture. Hello. The lady of the manor is here <laughs> and um, I'm about to get a bit of a tour of the house. Yes, so the kitchen is so much bigger than like I think you get a sense for online, but it is absolutely beautiful. So much natural light in there. I'll take you in there and show it. <laughs> and then I'm going to show you my favourite bits. Obviously, the first, I was so rude. I like walked in. I was like, where's the pantry? I need to see the pantry. <laughs> I don't have a pantry. And it, it makes me very excited when other people have pantries. I did the same thing at Fleur's. I was like, where's the pantry? <laughs> Let me see the pantry. But it's absolutely beautiful. And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen like such a concentration of beautiful homes around here. And so many with like wood and like the brick and flint that's found here. Oh, my gosh. And... I, drove, I said to you, I drove past, um, Claire Topman did up a um, house and I drove past it. I was like, oh my God, that's that house that Claire Topman like renovated. And it's so beautiful. I can't believe I even just in that split second knew that it was that. But we're going to go and have a tour of Zana's house and I'm going to show you my favourite bits. But if you want to see like the full thing, you'll obviously have to go over to her channel and have a look at her beautiful home. Can you say hello? Have you spoken to my manager? <laughs> I don't get out of bed for less than 50k. Okay. She's like, I don't make public appearances. Yeah. <laughs> look, hello, beautiful. Hello. Oh, look at her eyes. Hey, baby. We will be best friends, I promise you. <laughs> Garden. Look the jardin. Um, you didn't have to do anything. Yeah, the you've got the... Us have just, like, nailed it. It's oh, my lovely. favourite flower, so... Are they? Yeah. Oh, that's and so good to know. So oh, they're beautiful. The dream. And you, like, you can add little touches and things like that. Like, yeah. you, know, you could even have, like, a little pergola, like, summer house over there in the corner or my something. Dream. Just... I love anyway, it. So... <gasps> the main event. It is so gorgeous. I, know, I love that I just treat your house like it's my home and I've just yeah. thrown, thrown my linen shirt over here. But... I feel like one of the first things I remember is you getting, the when you moved in and you, and I was like, there will be wine in there. Is there wine? I can see champagne. There's still no you know wine what? in there. There might be some wine down here. But, but you won't be drinking it. 90% gin. Yeah. Because <laughs> I love the gin. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my gosh, the plants as well. I feel like I know who this is. <laughs> Charlie the Charlie. plant. Charlie. It's not Charlie. He's absolutely huge. Yeah, this is a snug. Love it. Oh my gosh. I just love the colour of these, like... Yes. Bushes. What colour is this? This is Lick 302. Lovely. Yeah. And I know that you've got a bit of a love for, like, antiques, antiques. and little knickknacks and things like that. So this yeah. pleases me very much. The pantry that isn't finished, it's in there. I won't, you don't have to show it, but I just I mean, needed to. I mean, you can, but it's not done yet. It's no. not organized. What, so... do you know what you're gonna do in here? Well, I've bought the baskets. Okay. I've like, bought the things for the oh, organization. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the jars. Yes. I need to do it. Yeah. But you should, do you know what you should have? You should have one of those professional organisers come in and help you. So we are now in Zana's wonderful, calm retreat of an office. Oh, I love that you've got this candle that says, Ah, oh, sorry, nest. I know. That's very sweet. Um, and she's also just informed me that she's having a bit of a wardrobe sale. And I think that there will be a fair few people that would like to buy this 
Stella McCartney like beach bag. Oh yeah, that's Stay very nice. I can't believe you're getting rid of that. So this is all made using the plain wood, which is really nice. Oh, it's lovely. Um, and then we obviously panelled the whole room. Yes. Like, oh, I love a bit of tongue and groove. And lots of woven baskets. Yes. We've got about 200 in this house. Oh, you speak <laughs> my language. <laughs> so now we have the reality behind the renovation. This is what happens. <laughs> the hot mess room. Guys. The hot mess room. My giant beanbag. Oh, <laughs> It's just like a shell of a room. Yeah. We need to put the furniture in. Right. We just kind of need a bit of space in other rooms to Yes. Yeah. Out. Into the wardrobe Again. of Zanna. Oh, wow. And we've got. See, this is the stuff that Zanna doesn't show on her channel too much. <laughs> the the bougie <laughs> stuff. Oh, look. <laughs> we love our pochette the teeth. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, no, I'm joking. I'm not going to But still. I feel like you'll enjoy these shelves. Look at the Yes. Shelves. I enjoy these ones. Too. I enjoy these ones too. Oh look, it's such a lovely picture when you did That's your Forbes 30 under 30. Yeah. Very, very cool. Oh. I made it back from Zanna's. I was actually quite late because I stupidly left at like dead on rush hour thinking, oh, it's not like that anymore. And obviously we are basically fully opened up in the UK. So the traffic was horrendous, but it did mean that I got to power through a lot of podcasts that I'd wanted to listen to. So it was actually, it was really good, but I was absolutely shattered. I had such a good day. By the time I got home, I was absolutely shattered. And I just found the entire thing so fascinating. So much so I would love to do more like foraging courses and things like that, because even just learning about the history of plants, like, you know, when you pick up a lemon and you think, oh, there's always been lemons. And it's like, of course there's not always been lemons. And hence why they would use the sorrel to give salads and things like that, that more citrus edge but it's just fascinating, absolutely fascinating. I could have stayed there all day. And then obviously getting to spend time at Zana's house was just so lovely. And I hope you liked my little mini tour of her house, but yeah, it's just been really, I think you've probably noticed that I'm being a lot more sociable than my usual self and I am loving it absolutely loving it so much. Today um, is a busy day at the house and I am wearing purely no foundation today. I've got the uh, sun kissed cream on today and then just some mascara and some uh, tinted lip balm because I am busy, busy. I will pop the link in the description box down below for where you can sample the sun kissed cream. If you've made it this far, make sure you head to that link now. It is going to be going up on my stories and there is only a limited number. So um, it really is first come first serve. And this is probably one of the most limited numbers that I've ever done. So if you're interested in trying it for free, you can do that in the, in the description box, but you can also just shop the items if you like them. Um, they'll be linked down there as well with some of my favorites. But I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.